my day. Yes, explain your day, Navitiate. Your record is hot. Your veins remain concealed. Your feet remain thin. Uh... By now, all Vox hailers are expected to have had their feet expand by a size exceeding your current circumference. The veins protrude from their legs like thick cords are binding in their backs, crooked by the sacred weight of the humanly Vox Tester. Tell me, Nevisiate, have you been hailing the Emperor's words? Sitting down like the Emperor? <laughs> Yours not the privilege to sit as our ever screaming emperor dies, Navitiate. You are to stand till you no longer can. Now tell me, exactly, why is it that your record is so spotty and your fate are so small? It's, it's all listen to the Vox cast. What? The Vox Casts. You refer to the Vox Casts of the Voice? <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. At all times. I do not have a stop. I am listening to them at all times. Right as we speak. As should you. I should all. I barely understand anything being said in them. I do not know what a coass is. It is our duty to transcribe the meaning behind every word, every syllable, every single sound uttered by the voice. Oh, Lord's voice. This our features shrink. Our backs shall elongate far, far into the ceiling, into space. The two seven hells are in first absence as just punishment for our negligence. We're all pains are we? Why would you question my loyalty to the voice, Novitiate? I am in No, them. no, I do not care to hear. You shall not taint with your squalid thoughts the matter of the voice. You will explain to me your day now, so that I may continue to listen with rapt attention to the Voxcast with the funny Goblin Man. I'll explain. I wake in the morning as the million bells scream out their metal song. I walk out of the box box that I stand in in the resting hours. I prepare to give thank yous to the machine spirit of the box cast. And you go about it how? I begin the rites of music before it till the bells stop sounding and my ears stop shrieking. Then I recite the hymn of hearing till my voice stops working. Then I light the incense. Then I scrub with the organ cloths the golden tar onto the caster frame. Then I pour the chamomile waters into the caster mouth, certain it is at the boiling point. Then I hold it aloft and shake it till the sacred scrambling sounds subside. Then I let the caster come to life pressing my lowly finger almost to its breaking point upon its hallowed upper room. I then take upon the manful mind blower and have it blast with its fierce scale the head of the caster till it crackles and pops holily with unparalleled quality. Mm. I have some remarks. First, Please do tell me you but for the moment forgot to mention the aromatic tablets and that you haven't neglected to pour them into the caster's gallet as part of the rite. Uh. Secondly, do you mean to tell me you have not actually broken your lowly fingers upon the hallowed power rune? No. Well, how could I press with broken fingers? A disgrace! Behold, oh, Novitiate! Uh. These fingers do not function. They are but shriveled tusks, blue, fragmented maggots, a daily sacrifice for the voice. They are used to power the machines, bit and nothing else. Yours are no better. But how do you hold? How do I hold? Why do you think my ribs protrude in this manner? Ribs are for holding. Navigate now. Continue as you were. I wish to hear what other sacrilege your day carries. <sighs> After the rites, I line for the communal break of fast. I attain the protein bar. I consume the protein bar. 
I remove the weird toenail things from the bar before I eat them because I'm grody. Food levity and consume the nails. They help you grow your feet. Oh. Continue. After break of fast, I go to the hygiene chambers. And then take off the cleansing dust and scrubs it all over. I roll in the dust and fill my mouth with the dust. And sometimes I get the dust in my non-metal eye, and I have to live with the dust for the rest of the day. I could use the water ration to scrub it, but the last time I did that, I almost went to thirst death later in the day. The burst tongue and the dry throat are both signs of gratitude. Your mortal vessel thanks you for using it to serve the voice. Ooh. I then hold my caster and stand in the line for Mount our order hall. As I follow the stream, I wish upon the machine spirit that I do not end up standing next to Bark Big Throat. So you now meekly drone about our greatest novitiate, Bark Big Throat, Fox Halo Wonder Child. She's mm -hmm. evil. Filth! It is filth that comes out of your mouth! Bark a big throat! Child prodigy amazes us with his extremely loud howling! Blessed with the throat of a Primarch, our screaming lord has made sure he will lead our order into the future. He kicks my shins and calls me a bag. No! It is but your shins that jab into Bark Big Throat's humongous feet! Pathetic. What do you accomplish once out in the palace? When I'm out of the line, I wander for a while. The streets have dangers, but I avoid most. Amongst the mildest is choking in the people, see. Not knowing how to crown walk properly can end you up suffocating and trampled to death. Like my friend Hegby. Weak. Also walking on the bombs. Gotta avoid those. Hegby told me some of the flora bombs have been planted in the streets since the palace invasion. Uh, gotta, gotta be careful not to step on one like Barn did. Destroy. A bit more dangerous is Arbitators. If someone walks funny or looks at the Arbito or eats burg wrong, or says life could be improved, they just scream, ATTENTION CITIZEN! DIE! And then the entire block is explode. Also the rats. Sometimes if you go too close to the sewer, the big ratties will grab you and eat. Sometimes the rats talk. I hear whispers of the underground ratty and bear them. Rats do not speak, Novitiate. Only humans speak. Continue. Well, as I walk, I also always look out for people who look very sneaky because they might just be Ian Watson boys who want to steal your skin and become you. Ludicrous. It's also death guaranteed to be in the crossfire between taco insurrectionists. Very danger. Also, sometimes there are orcs. They're always put away pretty quick, but one time my friend Bogway was grabbed by one and thrown into a plasma conduit. Quiet, Novitiate! I am sick of hearing all these ridiculous precautions you avowedly take. If you did not think so much, perhaps you would have lived a life as swollen and vicarious as that of Bog Bigthroat, who I just got the report uh, died in a tragic wreck. Excellent. Oh. Hmm. Rip. Why do you harangue me with so much vocal garbage? Tell me of your actual work. Why is your schedule so bad? Okay. So, I hop towards the gate. The gate? I soon end up at the big, big queue. The, the pilgrim one. The, the one into the gate. The gate? Yes, what I said. I am on a timer. I do not have the time to stand in pilgrim queue for many years. But skipping through the queue is super danger, because if someone thinks you are skipping, you will be eaten by the hangry pilgrims. So I roll out like Action Boy, 
camouflage under stones, brave the sewers, and run from the raddies, pretend to be extremely important so people move out of the way, fall down and pretend die in the forwards moving way. It, it, it all varies day to day, but the goal is just to get to gate and not get eight. Why do this? What purpose do you have at the front of the gate? Okay, so I slither slather my way to the front and done it die. Then comes the cheesy part. You begin hailing, yes, yes. No, I walk up the stairs. Don't, don't spit this liar's sledge at me, snake. You do not pass into the Emperor's personal realm. No, I do. No, you do not. I travel the stairways towards the big gate. Sometimes other pilgrims try and follow, but are made to dust by the picky guardies. I travel the big, big steps, and it is very exercising, but it also feels good due to the endolphins. I just gotta make sure I drink my waters and eat the pocket bugs on the way. Stop! Stop! No! You have no proof of this! It is but drivel! Drivel! If I am but drivel, then how do you explain these? These are big stairwalk legs, sir! <gasps> Why is the meat on your legs so bloated? What disease have you brought? It's musclies! Something you don't have, cause you only ever stand up! This is what I get for standing, sitting, walking, running, and hopping up big stair. This is what I get for rejecting your lacking creed. <laughs> Blasphemy, accursed royals. You sully the caster with your functioning fingers. You insult the Emperor with your ass in seat. After I travel up the stairs, the big gate opens for me. I am off joined by wardens of this ascended province, iridescently gleaming in luminosity shown like Chiliad suns reflecting the soul-enriching facts of the Man Emperor's million golden hues. With them I follow as we travel through colossal chambers, with roofs invisible to vision unassisted, whose uppermost reaches contain within them their own microclimates. So vast are they, and so uncannily constructed. We strive for that most sacred light of lights, shining at the apogee of the sanctum, brightly burning like a galaxy of flame. We pass through mountain ranges of impossible height, the skulls of heroes whose names are now forgotten carved from their ancient summits. Clouds of incense billowing around features worn smooth by the crushing passage of the years. Before our eyes, the apparitions of those who sold their very lives in holy service sit crying en masse. Choirs of the wailing souls of ten long millennia singing of their eternal, blissful agonies before shriveling to nothing at our approach. Throughout our journey, a slowly converging network of cables and machinery varying in size from spindly threads to massifs in their own right all creep like mechanical vines towards the distant, pulsating light winding their way through the gilded graveyards of these halls within whose coffins the corpses still scream. After uncountable time, after walking through lakes of plasma, halls of sleeping golems, Valleys of pistons and pumps, pyramids of glimmering ormite, we reached the ultimate door, wherein big skeleton sits. <sighs> you dare, you dare plant the sacrilegious notion. That you could enter the Emperor's throne room? No. No! You have not. You cannot. And the very concept of the idea must be eradicated from existence. You shall not only be punished. You shall not only be killed. 
you shall be censored. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Had your mouth shut by the sanctified silver tape. <laughs> You cannot pry the blessed tape off. It is too qualitative. It came recommended by the local mechanicus cult. They use this stuff for everything. (laughs) Now to also censor your ancestry. You shall live the life of the non-existent. You will not be anything to anyone. An even measlier existence than you already carry. Ah, this does mean I shall have to retcon your family. (laughs) Our reduction call will strike them out, and whoever may have known of their, or your, existence. (laughs) How? How dare you? You hit me with the sacred vox cat- God! God! My real- Hold your assault, little foot! They start with scream! Oh, my liver! Oh, my sirloin! Stop him! Stop him! Oh, my liver! Okay, that's it! Attack us, he's gone! Excellent work, Ars Hela. Is he to die? His, his hearing is compromised. His brain is bleeding. He will perish within the hour. Oh, very well then. I'm sure his thick leg meat will be of use as ration bars. Take him away from here. <laughs> he kicked me! It kicked me in the shins with its bloated legs! I'm bleeding! Evil! Evil! <laughs> right, I'm Silas Hibno! Attack Custer! Let's go! Well, what now? Boy! <sighs> I would scream with contempt at you for your lateness to the recording of the new Voxcast, but you seem to have blood gushing from out your ears. Why is your mouth covered? You are not mine to judge for your delayed boy. I can't hear anything. Well, that is an issue. You will not even be able to hear our glorious overlord typing out a description of the pain he was in while awaiting your arrival. They did it. They helped me here. They're gonna murder my family. Your what? You are one of the... The glorious custodies, yes. And just who are you to impede the Emperor's chosen Voxhaler from completing his duties? Hmm? <laughs> what? Oh, he bled out. Was that your work, boy? Did you kick his horrid leg veins open? (laughs) Impressive. How fortunate my chiseled form was here to arouse his demise. Dare I say, a collaborative effort. Nevertheless, come along, boy, before you suffer the same fate. We're moving you into the sanctum now. What? I said you're moving into the sanctum now! Your tardiness leaves us no other choice. Look, my family. Yes, we're making sure your kin, community, and progenitors are rightfully compensated for their contribution to the betterment of the Imperium. Come along now. What? And we're fixing your ears. Did I do what? Yes, Dornable will be proud. Still can't hear. Just say can yes or no. Shut up, boy. Oh, 
Okay, so I guess I'm a big, big traitor now. What should I do? Will I be killed? D did anyone else hear this? Should I just eradicate myself to save me from the inevitable torment? Or would anyone even care about me? A, a single individual amongst untold billions in a sea of souls. W what if they do, though? W what if I'm some kind of the primary target of the attempt to stare now? Sh should I uh, start a traitor cult? Try to become the threat they potentially see me as? Might be a bit of a tall order for me, though. Especially since I'm on Terra. Should I try to escape the planet? Would I even be able to? Probably not. Can I join a gang? Where can I find a gang in the palace? The Arbiters are basically a gang, right? And again, they'll probably be the ones to kill me. What about the Mechanicus cult? Could I join them? Would I need to replace my face with a cyber dong? Wait, what about that rat Imperium I heard whispers of coming out of the sewers? Do they recruit non-rats? Could I become a rat? Do I need a fursuit or do I just need big teeth and claws and a nasty tail? How do I, how do I get a tail? Just attaching a rope might be considered a bit gauche. Would a mechanical one suffice? Could I grow one using tail?